Welcome back to Math for Game Developers. Today we are going to do our first real numerical analysis algorithm. And suppose you have some blue ocean waves and you want to render what the light looks like on the floor of this ocean uh, as it comes in and it gets refracted. It gets bent by the surface of the water. And you're going to get a very light spot here underneath the concave part of the wave and then a not very light spot, spot right there. But as we learned in our uh, rendering and shaders part of the uh, series that we did before, we have an individual point that we want to render and we have to figure out how bright it is. So this is like the problem that we had with the rays, but in reverse. We have to figure out what ray hits this point. And there's not, you know, there's not always a there's not always a closed form solution for that sort of problem. So this is one problem of very many that we can use root finding to solve. Um, and now just as a disclaimer, I don't actually recommend that you <laughs> do caustics, that's what this is called, with root finding. Um, but this is just an example that we can use to learn what root finding is uh, and how it can be used in many different areas in video, ga video games. Not just rendering, um, but physics as well and a whole bunch of other things. So let's say you have some kind of function here and you know that it has a root between A and B. Okay, and B. Uh, and you wanna find where that root is. In, in other words, at what x value, if this function is h of x, at what x value does h of x equal zero? So that's what we're trying to find out. Uh, h of x equals zero, what is x? So we can take this problem that we have up here and transform it into a root finding problem by saying, okay, what position of incoming light strikes this surface and we have to arrange our our formulas such that when um, when the incoming light strikes our surface then our formula equals zero and there are a lot of problems that can be turned into root finding problems and solved with root finding techniques and I'm not going to get into how to transform this one that way that will come later um, for now, let's learn a root finding technique and how we can use it. And the first one we're going to learn is called bisection. Bisection method. Bisection method is really similar to something we've done before. And so I'm going to uh, illustrate that. So if we have two, two, four, we have a list of numbers, three, four, eight, nine, twelve, 18, 19, for example. And we want to know if 8 is in this list. Let's put 10 in there too. Why not? We want to know if 8 is in this list. Then we can do a binary search. And a binary search, if you remember, is we cut the list in half and then we find what is the middle point of the list. And the middle point looks to be about 9. And so now we have a new list that is half the size and now we find the middle point of that list. And that'll be three. Uh, and then, okay, and we looked at the left side of nine because we know that eight is less than nine and so eight has to be on the left side of nine if it's in the list. So now we cut the list again in half and we see that three is less than eight. So eight must be to the right of three. And then we continue to do that. We iterate on that until we find either there is an eight or there's not. And bisection is the same thing. We have this a and b, uh, and we know that right here is the point where h of x equals zero, so I will call that x naught. So let's cut a and b in half and evaluate h of the midpoint between a and b. And 
then we can see whether the intersection of H and the axis is to the right or to the left. In this case, it's to the right, and so we do the same thing as before. We make this into our new right bracket, uh, and then we consider this interval instead of the whole interval. So we're now only looking at half as much data. And then we'll do it again. We will look at the midpoint. We see that the intersection, the root, the root, this is called the root. Did I mention that? That's why it's called root finding. We're finding the root. So we do another evaluation of H, we see that the intersection between um, of, of the x-axis is to the left of our midpoint, and so we cut our interval in half again. And this is called bisection method because every iteration, you are bisecting your interval, you're cutting it in two. So there are a few things that you have to know before you can apply bisection method, very important. One, you have to know that the function has a root at all. If h is always positive or always negative, then the function has no root and you cannot use any root finding methods on it at all. Um, two, you have to have a good bracket. So you have to know that you can find an a, why is this showing up, an a and a b such that the a is to the left of the root and the b is to the right of the root. Uh, and three, you have to know that um, that there's only one root inside of your bracket. If there are multiple roots inside your bracket when you start, then you don't know which one you're going to get. But if there's only one root, then you're guaranteed to that root to get that root. And fourth, you have to know when to stop. That's important. So you have to decide ahead of time a number called epsilon. Epsilon, Epsilon. I'm gonna draw, it looks like an E, it's a Greek letter. Um, and you have to determine that when the difference between your brackets is less than Epsilon, then you've become acceptably close to the number. So this is the first really important idea in numerical analysis, and it's why numerical analysis is different than most other you know, branches of mathematics. And that's because in numerical, you are, you accept um, approximations for the numbers that you want to get. And that's why it's okay to work with floating point numbers because floating point numbers are all approximations anyway. Uh, so it's, it's no problem to use them to, to calculate things. So we're not going to get an exa exact answer, but we are going to get an answer that is within epsilon of the real answer, and we can make that epsilon pretty small. So now let's look at the steps to actually do this algorithm. So one, we find out what A1 and B1 and Epsilon we want to start with, okay? And then two, we calculate the midpoint. And that is just the mean of plus of A and B. And I say n minus one here, by that I mean the a and b of our previous iteration. Okay, three, now, so we know what our midpoint is and now we have to establish whether or not uh, the intersection is to the left or to the right of the midpoint. How are we gonna do that? Well, when we originally cut this function in half, light blue, um, we evaluated the function at the midpoint. And now we're gonna do a little trick. We're gonna say h of x times h of uh, a. And in this case, we see that h of x is positive and h of a is positive. And so if there's no intersection between a and x, then they'll both be positive. And so um, there will be no intersection to the left. Of, so then we know that the intersection has to be to the right. Otherwise, if it's negative, then the intersection has to be to the left. And so that's what we're gonna use to figure out 
Um, so if it's less than zero, that means the intersection has to be to the left, which is not what's in this picture. But then uh, the left bracket will remain the same and we will, for the next right bracket, we will use the current midpoint. Otherwise, the left bracket will become the current midpoint and the right bracket will stay what it was before. And then the final step in our algorithm is to test whether or not we've gotten within epsilon of the number that we want. And this is how we do that. If the difference between our bracket is bigger than the epsilon, and if this diff distance right here is bigger than epsilon, then we'll go back to the beginning and we'll find a new midpoint. Otherwise, if it's less than epsilon, then the distance from the bracket to the root must also be less than x epsilon and so we're done. So step five, the last step, is to return one of the brackets. It doesn't really matter which one. So that's bisection method, and we're gonna go to the code section of the video now to, uh, to, see, to, to code it up, and we're gonna see it at work in an actual, not a game this time, just a demo. So I'll see you there. And thanks for joining me in the code section. I'll explain where we have so far. We're gonna use bisection method to find the value of pi as was suggested by somebody uh, on Twitch, uh, on the stream that I'm streaming right now. Um, and our left bracket is gonna be three and our right bracket is gonna be four. As you know, pi is between three and four. And uh, we're going to use as our function sine because sine of pi is zero. And so that is a perfect example of a, of, a, of a root finding function. We're finding the value at which sine is zero and that is pi exactly. Very convenient for us. And then we have to decide on an epsilon and we're gonna use point 0.00001, which works in this case. Depending on your case, um, you may have to use a different value and you should not just use point 0.00001, you should use something that works for your situation. And um, also suggested by the streaming audience, I have a link in the description to um, something that you can go to to read a little bit more about that. So, but for now, let's take a look at the bisection method that we're going to use here. Okay, so this function up here is the bisection method. We have our initial A and B and the function we're gonna evaluate and the epsilon. That's all the stuff that we needed to start bisection method. So we're gonna make our current an, we're gonna initialize it with a1 and b1. And then we're gonna evaluate h at a and h at b. Uh, okay, so h a is the value of h at a and h b is the value of h at b. Um, Let's make this H, that's D, H, H. Okay, so let's start writing our, we start with step two, which is finding the midpoint, and then we test the midpoint, H of X. Step three is, is it less than zero? If it is less than zero, then we're going to update the right bracket. So if it's less than zero, that means our intersection is on the right. So we're gonna update the right bracket to be the midpoint. And we're going to update the evaluation at the right bracket to be the evaluation at the midpoint. Otherwise, we are going to move the left bracket to be the midpoint and the left bracket uh, and update the evaluation at the right bracket. Okay, and that should be all we need. Let's compile it and run it and see what we get. We got 
3.141593, which is very close to the actual value of pi is 3.1415926. So when it's rounded, that is correct. Um, now let's make our epsilon a little bit smaller and see what the algorithm does. So say we want to find, in fact, let me also do this. We'll find how many iterations it takes uh, to come up with the answer. We're going to print that out real quick. So with our original epsilon, it took 19 iterations. So now let's reduce it to 0 0.01 and see what answer it gives us and see how many iterations that took. It gives us now 3.148, which is uh, pretty close. 3.1415 is the correct answer. So it is within 0.01. Uh, but it took fewer iterations, so it did it a little bit more, a little bit faster. So great. Um, next week we are going to, oh, and here we go. I'm going to give you the finished result here. This is a program that I wrote a few months ago. And you can see the caustics on the floor, which I simulated in real time. Again, not the best way to do caustics. It's really slow. Um, but I wanted to do a, a little bit of root finding and you can see that it worked. So this is the sort of thing that you can do with a root finding technique. And in this video, actually, I use a lot of other numerical analysis techniques that I will cover um, in this series. We're going to see a lot of the stuff that I did to, to make this series. So, And we will see that uh, next time when we cover... What are we covering next time? What are we covering next time? Uh, oh, yes. Fixed point iteration. See you then.